Welcome to the Unpacking It podcast presented by MetaShare. This is the show that unpacks sports, faith, and life with intriguing guests from the sports and entertainment world. I'm Bryce Johnson. Hope you're doing great today. Thank you so much for joining us. I am thrilled about today's guest and the interview that you're about to listen to. It is powerful, inspiring, and you will leave with a a passion for Jesus because you heard the passion come through our guest, Cameron Babb. He is passionate, he is bold, he is confident, and Jesus has changed his life, and he tells us all about it. And if you've wondered or questioned uh, if if God is real and if he's still changing lives, after you hear this, you'll go, wow, God is good and powerful, and Cam's story, uh, it lifts me up in my faith, and, and I hope it does the same for you. And so as you listen, you're going to hear a, a genuine story, and it is a, a transforming story. That Cam Babb was one guy, Jesus entered his life in a, in a real significant way and changed his heart, and, and he tells us all, all about it. So uh, buckle up. This is a good one. So you'll want to listen all the way through. And, and so if you have to, to pause it and go back to it, actually, I don't even think you'll be able to pause it. You're not going to want to stop. You're going to want to finish and go all the way through. It's that good. Uh, stick around at the end. I, I, will, I will give a little bit more of my uh, reaction and, and takeaway uh, to the conversation. Before we jump in, I want to thank our presenting sponsor, MetaShare. If you're looking for an affordable, reliable healthcare option that you can trust, check out MetaShare today. My family, we're members, have been for a number of years, and you can find out if it's the right fit for you and your family. Go to MetaShare.com slash unpacking it. MetaShare.com slash unpacking it. MetaShare offers programs for every budget. So if you're an individual, parent, small business owner, ministry leader, self-employed, MetaShare has options for you. The best part, their members on average save 50% or more on their health care costs. So check it out, MetaShare dot com slash unpacking it also here at unpacking it we love this podcast we hope that you will uh love it as well uh we love bringing it to you we love putting it on and, and hosting it and producing it and and a lot of hard work goes into it behind the scenes and so uh thanks to my my producers and, and everybody a part of the unpacking it team here uh we also beyond the podcast have a devotional that goes out monday wednesday friday through email and so you can subscribe to that for free. Uh, you can go to unpackingit.com slash subscribe. We take sports stories, relate them to the Bible, relate them to our own lives, and you can subscribe for free on our website, unpackingit.com. Well, Cam Babb is a wide receiver for the Ohio State Buckeyes, and he came out in the class of 2017 as the number one wide receiver in the country, uh, according to some media outlets. and since then, has had major injury problems and has overcome them to now be ready to go for his fifth season with the program, and you're going to hear all about his story. Here we go. And joining us now on the MetaShare guest line is Ohio State wide receiver Cameron Babb. He heads into his fifth season with the program and has battled back from four ACL injuries. We're going to hear all about his story today. Cam, thanks so much for joining us. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Thank you uh, for having me on the show, man. And I look forward to talking to you. I appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. Well, well, first, let's talk about kind of the, the off season and, and heading in to this upcoming season. How has spring camp been going? I know you got a little banged up. How are you feeling? What's kind of your overall uh, mindset heading into uh, the new season? Yeah, um, shoot, this offseason one's going pretty well, man. You know, went through winter workouts. The team's looking strong. Uh, you know, I stayed healthy through winter workouts and lifting and running and doing everything we do through the winter. Uh, and then we got into spring. Um, I, I did really good in spring, I would say. Is, uh, I did better than I have in the past. You know, I think uh, this is the best that I've, I've looked um, in some years. So, um, you know, just leaning on the Lord and um, – it went really well, though. I think the team's looking great. I'm kind of fired up to get into the summer and then get into camp, man. So we're just kind of trying to take it one day at a time and, um, you know, just see where this thing goes. So, 
Th- that's right. And, and of course, last year, uh, the team went to the Rose Bowl, won, won the Rose Bowl, and, and coming into to this upcoming season, highly ranked and, and big sure. expectations. So, so what's kind of – What's your approach to now, now that you've been there five years, just kind of being a part of a team that has high expectations year in, year out, and, and being one of the leaders to, to set the tone when it comes to the standard that, that is Ohio State football? Yeah. yeah, most definitely. It's definitely a blessing, man. But I would say, you know, just coming in, um, just hearing and just being able to see the guys that came before me, like guys like Terry uh, McLaurin, you know, Johnny Dixon and Paris Campbell and see uh, – the culture that they kind of created as they were here, um, just seeing how it kind of resonates today and um, how I kind of took that leadership role with guys like Chris Olave and stuff like that, that were in the room. Um, you know, it's just awesome to see. So just trying to continue that and kind of just show even the young guys that are coming in um, what that looks like, you know. And um, so I think it's a blessing, man, just be able in that conversation every year, um, just having a good team, but also just knowing that um, we put in the work, you know, um, that we have this platform and, um, that God has given us this platform to really do what we do. And so we just put in the work every day and just being able to come out there and just work hard and, and have that kind of that light shined on us. Um, it's a blessing. So, you know, we're just trying to take this opportunity. Um, and I'm looking forward to it, man. I think uh, the Lord's going to do big things this year. Like he always does. He's always working, always doing big things. But um, just in the team and just in Columbus and just with all the fans and stuff. So I, I definitely am believing uh, for him to kind of, you know, do things that he's never done before. So. Oh, very cool. Well, that's exciting. I love love that for sure. Well, let's uh, let, let's get into your your story and, and and your journey and and even gosh, just thinking you know from a from a football perspective, all all you you've been through with with the with the ACL injuries and and, and of course in thinking about your story, I think about, I'm a Panthers fan. I think about Thomas Davis, but but let's let's share with our listeners kind of the the, the path that that you've been on. And and kind of even take us into the experience of, of each injury, kind of yeah. as it as it happened. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, so it kind of started. It really all started back in high school. Um, and you know, I hadn't really had any injuries up until like you know, I had a little one junior year, but until senior year, um, senior year was the first ACL that I had on my right leg. Um, and I was, you know, I just got back from the opening. Um, it's a high school camp, Nike opening, uh, with all the top guys uh, throughout the nation. So I just got back from that. Um, and I was looking really good, looking really refined going into the season. Um, and we actually had a dad's practice, uh, something my high school, uh, CBC in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, we had a dad's practice like the week before the first game where the dads just come by and just kind of watch practice. And, um, yeah, we're just doing like one-on-ones and um, just a normal play. And I just go up to catch the ball. And then I just come down and um, I, I come down and I feel it. I feel like a little tweak or pop or you know, it kind of happened so fast. So it's kind of, you don't really remember. You just feel the, the pain in that moment. Uh, but I had never, I didn't really know what an ACL, like how it felt or anything. I actually had a best friend who tore it two years before. And so I never thought I'd kind of be in that situation. But yeah, so I thought it was just a hyperextension. That's what my dad thought. That's kind of what the trainers told me. And then um, we go in to kind of find out, got the MRI and kind of found out that was, uh, you know, ACL. And at that moment, that was kind of, uh, the first adverse adverse situation that I've had really had to go through um, in that moment, just because I, you know, I was kind of getting re- highly recruited. A lot of things were going my way and just to find out that I wouldn't get to, you know, play my last year in high school. And at that point, it was kind of just to have fun. You know, I had all the the offers and I was coming here to O State. So it was I had everything. I just want to kind of enjoy that senior season with my friends. And when I found out that I couldn't, um, you know, my world kind of felt crushed at that moment, being a 17 year old in, in high school. So. Gosh, and I, I I imagine that that's the case, and and so as you you look back on on that time, how how do you see how God used that time, and then and then ultimately how did that uh, I guess prepare you for college, but then take us into the rest of the journey. Where, where you ended up having, uh, unfortunately, multiple ACL injuries. Yeah, for sure, man. Well, I would say um, I was kind of, I would kind of be not ignorant, but like I, I believe that the Lord was kind of, not that he caused my ACL or anything like that, but he allowed uh, certain situations to happen. Um, but I would honestly say, man, I, I mean, I, I claim to be a Christian growing up. Uh, grandmother was praying grandmother and um, I wasn't really following Christ. You know, I kind of just would add that title onto just believing in Jesus just because that was like the normal thing to do um, in America. And so I would say, man, um, just going through the adverse situations, man, and 
going through suffering, if you want to you want to use that word. Um, that was like the first step. But I was kind of I think that allowed me to kind of just be without football and just ask the question, OK, um, you know, who, who am I? You know, and even at that moment, senior high school, I didn't truly know. But I think um, just being able to be away from football, it also allowed me to spend time with family um, a lot. Um, and do rehab and stuff, of course, but I was allowed to spend time with family a lot my senior year and just friends and stuff and um, still enjoy it. So I would just say, man, um, that was kind of the first step, you know, it was kind of I didn't really if you told me, you know, my senior year that I was going to go through four of them. I don't really know if I would have uh, kept going, you know, so um, so I get to school and uh, rehab for like, you know, 10, 11 months and then come in feeling really good. Um, and then that's when Coach uh, Coach Meyer and uh, Coach Zach Smith, he he recruited me um, from sophomore year up, and he was here um, and coming in really strong. And then uh, we were just going through individual drills kind of mid-summer. And, uh, yeah, I just kind of tried to make a turn, and uh, bang, I felt the other one. So it was, instead of my right one, it was my left one, so it was right, left. Um, and then after that one, um, just the way my parents kind of raised me, um, again, I wasn't really too, thinking about God too much, honestly. I was just thinking about football, really, honestly. Um, like I said, I wasn't really following Jesus. And I was in my mind, it was like, okay, I, I tore the second one. They told me after the first one, you're more likely to tear it um, um, after you have one. So I was like, okay, you know, um, I still have four years left. I can redshirt. That option is still available. So I don't lose any time. So I can learn the playbook. I can do everything I need to do. And I'll be better than ever when I come back. Um, so, yeah, I go through that year and um, I would say, man, it was kind of hard just because all my guys that I came in with were practicing and I was, you know, stuck in in rehab in the training room with uh, my guy, Adam Stewart and everything that he does, man. And it was a great time. And I, I love my, my dog and, and everything that he's worked with me on. But, you know, it definitely sucked not being able to be out there, especially when you first come in and things are new and um, you just want to be a part of the team. So there was kind of that disconnect um, at times. And so, yeah, I would say I uh, went through that first year, man. I didn't really know who I was still. Hmm. Um, I was still going through. I was definitely going through a rough patch and, and just doing things that um, to try to fill the void of, uh, you know, not knowing who I was as a person, as a player, you know. And so I'll go out and just do things um, that, you know, weren't healthy for me, you know, and I know that I know that the Lord didn't want me to do. Um, at the time, I really didn't think about it. But uh, so, yeah, go through that first ACL trying to our second ACL trying to find my identity in. Um, really the only time I could really be with my, with my friends or, and teammates were kind of just on the weekends after the games and stuff like that. So that's really the only time I felt connected with them. Um, and so, yeah, so I train and rehab and I'm still lifting and doing everything that the team is kind of doing, but it's just, I'm just not practicing with pads and doing all that. on. So, um, we go, we get to do winter workouts that next season and we get to spring ball, same thing. It was kind of the same exact situation, we make a cut. Um, nine contacts and then it was the left one again um and so this was like the breaking point i would say this is when this is when the jesus really showed up um in a way that i didn't even ask for or expect um and so yeah i tore tore that third one man and that was like okay like i'm done man and i remember just telling chris chris olave man he was he was kind of right next to me and i just told him man i, I can't do this no more you know I, I quit man i'm i'm done and so i go into the the trainer room and um Man, I just remember just I just felt so disappointed, man, just because you put all that work in and it's the third one. And at this point, it's like I still identify as you know, everybody knows, you know, just as athletes. That's what the world kind of looks at, as looks at us as is just athletes. You know, it's not really a person. And that's kind of your Cam Valley football player. That's kind of what I've kind of been raised up to be in high school and even coming here, man. So um, just knowing that, man, it was very hard, man. It was very um, heartbreaking to me. Um, so, yeah, so. Now, my little testimony is uh, coming to Columbus and I plan to go back um, just to kind of figure out things with family, go back to St. Louis. And uh, so I they they kind of give me a flight to go home. Um, and basically um, I go to Uber out of Columbus that next day or the few days after that. And after I go to uh, to the Columbus airport, um, I try to get on my flight. But the, the airport, they wouldn't let me out of Columbus. They say I'm on the wrong flight. This isn't the, the right flight. Um, but I had all the correct information. Everything was right. It was the correct flight, um, but they just wouldn't let me on. And so the flight ended up taking off. And I was like, OK, well, let's double check because I'm pretty sure that was the right one. There's no other one going out of St. Louis out of Southwest. And um, yeah, it was the right one. So I had to go back and um, go back to my dorms. And then I had an Uber out later that day. And the second Uber is when I found um, or met a young man. Uh, his name is Darnell. 
Um, he goes to a church called Hope City House of Prayer here in Columbus. And um, he just told me about his testimony, man. He was trying to talk to me about Jesus and all these things. And I've heard all of it. Or I thought I had before. And so I wasn't really trying to hear it, man. I was um, I was just I was all about football and I was just in my own world. I wasn't really thinking too much about God. I was kind of like, OK, God, why? Like, why this? Why that? And um, yeah, man. And so he prayed for me um, when we got to the airport after telling me his testimony. And, and he just the way this young man prayed at the time, he's like 24, 25. And um, I just started crying and, and sobbing and weeping. At, and at that moment, I had when I was younger, I went to a kid's camp when I was like eight years old and I had felt the Holy Spirit. But I, I I didn't know. I didn't really know what I didn't know. You know, I was just I was eight years old. And I remember I was at the altar and I was on my knees and God met me there. And it took all this, all these things to happen as a young man, finding out who I was, not because my grandma prayed for me, all these things, even though that matters. But yeah. because I had to choose Jesus myself or in other words, I believe he chose me to truly see who he is. And so once he started praying, man, um, I just kind of just started shaking and just all these things that never really has happened to me before. And. I just remember after that prayer, I just called my grandma. We call her Gigi, and I just remember so excited because I was like, "That was the Holy Spirit. Hey, that that has to be because there's no other explanation for it." And so I go back um, and decide wow. with them. I was like, "I believe God. I don't know what He's gonna do." Talk to Gigi, my mother, and my dad, and stepmom, and everybody back home, and it's like I don't know what what Jesus is gonna do, but I know I need to go to this this church and I need to meet people at this church. But I know He wants me to continue to play football. I don't know how it's going to look, but I know he does. And so I go back and um, when I go back, I, I you know, I kind of, you know, that's when I kind of give my life to the Lord. And it was like a three, three month span of really trying to give my life to the Lord and trying to get away from um, the things of this world, man. And, you know, just going out. And if I could be frank, you know, just, you know, drinking and doing things that I know um, or now that I know, you know, it's not it's not what the Lord wants for, you know, for his children. man. And so what I do, man, is. I, I meet a young man um, by the name of Reed, um, and he's, he was a, a elder at the church, and he really prayed, and he was really that mentor and kind of showed me who it was to, what it was to be um, a follower of Christ and what it was to just seek him, you know, seek him in a way that I didn't know until I, I really um, went to this church, man. And um, and so there was a moment where he just told me, man, you have to give everything up. You have to give football up, man. You have to give it to you have to give it to Jesus. You have to give up, you know, family and friends and all these things, not in a literal sense, but like, Lord, you are first. Like, God, mm. you are sovereign. You are holy. You are merciful. You are all these things. And and Jesus, you you are my life. And and it took all these things to happen in my life to 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 get to a point where I was just on my knees mm. and. I didn't, I couldn't do anything but look up. There was no plan. There was nothing else, you know, because my identity was truly in football. And once that got taken away, I had no idea who I was until, and the only way I could find out who I was when I looked at the person that who, who created me, that got the, the Lord and the Savior that saved me. That's the only way that I could, the only way that I believe that we can truly find out is who we are is, is by looking at Jesus. It's, there's no other love that I felt other than that. And it was after that third ACL that I truly found that, you know, and, and, um, so yeah, I give my life to the Lord truly. And it was kind of when I truly not just saying it with my with my my lips, you know, or just you know, just saying it because everybody else says it. Cause I've said a prayer growing up my whole life, Lord, I repent or Jesus it come into my heart and all these things, but it never like happened like that. And it was like a heart posture that I had mm. because I know at that I knew I experienced him, I experienced his love, I experienced his presence at that moment. And it was in that that. I knew he was he it wasn't just real because of my grandparents or because of, I grew up in church but it was it was real to me you know because he had he had literally touched my heart and I I surrendered to him in that very that very instant man and um being frank with you man it was uh just you know I had, I had uh, been dealing with a, a young woman uh, back home and I had to you know put that aside and do everything uh, that I believe that he he used to grab my attention, man, and really just truly just say, Cameron, I'm here. I'm right here, you know, and, and I believe he's he's with us. He's, he's here grabbing, trying to grab our attention our whole lives, man. And we just we have to make that decision to say yes, man. And it's only by the grace of God like that. I said, yes, it's it's not me. It's not because I'm some strong young man or anything like that. But it's only because of what he did on that cross and mm. and just who he is that I'm even I was even able to say yes to him, man. So. Um, so after the, after that, man, after I gave my life, it was, it was like instant, man. Like the Holy spirit was, was real to me and I can, I could talk to him and have that, you know, direct connection with, 
with God and just with Jesus. And it was just to, to understand who he is and understand now who I am outside of football. So now it's no longer what I do on the field that defines me or what I do in the classroom or what I do, at, you know, when I get older as a job that, that defines me. But it's it's who does Jesus say I am? And it's in that that is that it's that peace and that love and that mercy and, and everything that he wants to give each and every one of us, you know. And so I go to that third ACL, man, and I'm thinking, you know, OK, oh, I got Jesus. I'm doing it for the Lord. Like, OK, we're about to we're about to go crazy. You know, I'm about to this is about to be a story that's, that nobody's ever heard of. man. Um, so I was thinking to come back that next year. And uh, I want to say going into to spring ball again. That's why I'm so excited because I got out of spring this year, uh, kind of, you know, not not as bad as it was. But um, that third time going to spring or fourth time, I go into spring ball um, doing really well and all that again. And then kind of the same thing, man. Um, I get a jet sweep and kind of just try to come around the corner looking strong, looking fast and make a cut again, non-contact. And boom, it's the right one. And um uh, you know, this time it was different. Bro. This time, you know, obviously it hurt. Obviously, you put in all this work. You know, you're believing for Jesus to do, you know, crazy things. You know, which he he definitely did, even despite how we, you know, with our limited understanding, can think or see it. But um, it was at that moment, man. I realized it, it wasn't the same like the last three. It wasn't like the last three uh, ACLs. And even though I tore it and it hurt and it wasn't what I wanted, man. There was a there was a sense of peace. There was a sense mm. of joy in that suffering, in that sorrow, in that moment, just because my hope is no longer in football. My hope is no longer in this in life, and, you know, and just in this life. You know, there's things that I love to do and want to do in life. But like my my hope is in Jesus, man. And just knowing like he's coming again and he loves me and I'm, I'm his like that's it. When you ask who is Cameron Babb, there's no you know, you can add people can add all these extra things to it. But. Before anything, I'm 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 I belong to Jesus. I'm a son of of God, and that's it. You know, if I could just end it with an exclamation point after that, I would because there's nothing else that needs to be added because He is worthy of my whole life, my every breath. You know, and He He is of all of ours. And so I would just say, man, after that fourth one, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just kept rehabbing, and you know, at this point, man, um, going into before going into last season, um, you know guys on the team kind of have seen the transition. They've seen how I acted freshman year and sophomore year going out and doing, you know, certain things, partying and doing all these things. And it only, it, the, I couldn't change that on my own. I couldn't just stop going out and, and, and drinking and doing these things on my own, but it took, it took a holy and loving and a powerful God to, to come within me, come inside of me with the Holy spirit and change me from the inside out. Um, and so, man. yeah, man, people saw these changes and, you know, I had talked to certain guys on the team and they know my, you know, my faith and they know what I stand for. And I know, I know, like I said, I know who I am. So I don't try to be like anybody else. And obviously I have things that I have to work on and I'm not perfect. And really, honestly, I'm a sinner that needs Jesus. I need the blood of Jesus. And that's, that's, really, that's really it. Um, and so they see all these things and then we have conversations where we're meeting with Bible study, especially during COVID and we're doing all these things. And um, so last year comes around, man, and I'm rehabbing during camp. You know, for the fourth time and um and with my guy adam stewart um and the whole training staff shout out to them man and uh for even sticking with me and coach day and coach hard and all these guys for sticking with me for this long long period of time man but uh yes yeah, so camp comes around we were in camp and they get to name captains and um uh, yeah so they named like two guys um i forget i think it was like haskell and a few other one other guy i think it was about maybe chris um or zach harrison first and then um, yeah, Coach Day just he, he just he just sits there for a second and just shakes his head. He's like, "Man, I've never seen anything like this before, man." And, um, and then he calls my name, and it's at that moment, you know, again, I don't know what Jesus is gonna do, and again, I'm I'm still believing for him to do great things, whether it's how I want it to look or not. He's gonna do what he does. Um, but it was at that moment, man, that I knew Jesus, you're doing something. You're mm. doing something, even though I haven't played it down really real real like i've had, not even i've played it down like special teams but even though i haven't had a catch mm. like these guys look at me as a leader but it's only because i'm following you it's only because you're in the driver's seat and i'm not even in the passenger seat or i try not to i'll try to be in the trunk and just let him take me wherever <laughs> he wants to take me you know so it's like man i just it's only because of jesus that i was even named captain man and now i'm here standing here before you because there were so many times and there still is definitely difficult times that I don't know if I can do it anymore, but it's only because of him that I'm still going and that 
I've been recognized as a leader, as um, this spiritual leader or whatever you want to say, man. But um, I would say it's because of, of what Jesus has done inside of me, man. And, and I'm no different than the homeless man across the street. You know, he's just as he's no less important than I am, you know, and that's the beautiful thing about Jesus. It's not about your title or about how much money you make or what you do, man. It's what well, it is about what you do, but it's like what you do for him with what he has given you, you know, and and just through all the suffering that I've went through. Like I said, if it wasn't for that suffering, I probably would not have said if I was in a league right now making a lot of millions of dollars, I don't know if I would have said yes to Jesus because mm -hmm. I don't know. I just I, I thought I had him, you know, I thought I had everything that I needed, you know, and like I said, it's only by the grace of God that I'm, I've he's allowed these ACLs to happen. And it's crazy looking back because you're like, dang, how'd you get through all that? And mm -hmm. I asked myself and then I just look at it, I just man, thank you, Jesus. And and he just put a, a hunger in me to read the word of God, like truly read the Bible. And I believe that is 100 percent God's word. And that is is rooted, has been rooted in me um, from the time that I say yes to him. man. so um, that's kind of my journey. And now I'm here, man. I had a little hiccup in spring, spring ball, um, but I'm 100 percent healthy. Thank the Lord. And uh, I'm just glad, glad to have gotten past spring ball and now uh, looking forward to the summer and um, here, you know, coming soon and then uh, looking forward to camp in the season, man. So that's kind of my little, my, my little spiel. So, little hey, testimony, hey, so amen. Gosh, man. Well, ca catch your breath. I, I got, I, I'm, I'm almost getting emotional here. I, I was, uh, I was holding back, holding back a little bit, but, but man, I mean, it's, inspiring it's powerful to, to hear what god has done and like you said inside you that then changes your outside and and, and who, who you've become uh, from the inside out and so uh this is this is uh gosh one of the most powerful testimonies we, we've heard uh on this show so I, I appreciate you sharing it and being bold and confident in what god has done in your life and that's that's your story there's there's no denying what god has done i mean that's that's uh, that that's amazing and and I guess my, I think maybe one of the obvious questions is, you know, why keep playing football? How, like, I guess, how did God work in you to kind of mm -hmm. give you that that affirmation yeah. to keep going, especially after the fourth one? I, I know that he yeah. was using the three to, to mm -hmm. draw you to himself, but then mm -hmm. after that, that fourth one to say, yeah, I'm still, I'm still going to keep playing because yeah. this, this is where God wants me. Yeah, I mean, I think just – I mean, it wasn't like I'm not going to sit here and say God spoke to me in a loud voice or anything like that. But I just believe just learning, leaning on the Holy Spirit and just, again, staying in my word. And also, like, just seeing the fruit of what he's doing. And so not even just in my life, but my teammates lives and just the fact that they like I said, they chose me to be captain like. There was just something that I believe, you know, and I, I could be completely wrong, but I just believe, first of all, the doctors have said my knees look, you know, you can look at somebody that's never had an ACL tear and, you know, my knees just look just like that, you know, and there's some guys that haven't had an ACL tear and they look worse than mine, you know, so I would say that's only a testimony to what he's doing. And um, so I would say, man, just the fact that I feel so good that I my knees with the MRI and with everything looks so great. Um you know, I just believe God can do something great. And whether it's on the field or off the field, he's, I know and that he will do something great, whether that's through me or somebody else, man. I just want to be a vessel to say yes to that. And mm -hmm. uh, so I would just say, man, with all that, I'm just believing, you know, there's not really a, I just, when I looked back, I just didn't want to say, dang, Lord, you could have used me like this, or you may have used me like this, you know, and I know I still have another go in me. So, you know, the worst thing is, you know, I, I, I tear something again. I don't believe I will, but like that, was, that would be the worst thing that happens. And if if that happened, okay, Lord Jesus, I, I, I gave it, I gave you my body, I gave you everything I got. Now, what do you what do you want me to do next? You know, mm -hmm. and uh, but I truly do believe this year, man. And um, again, don't say this is like you know I'm not saying God told me this, and I'm not a prophet saying this or anything like that. But I do believe that He's going to do something great on the field through me um, and this team and, and whoever else I pray that is trying to glorify his name truly. Um, so I'm just here to glorify this year and however many years I have and left on this earth, I just want to tell the world about Jesus, whether that's taken, you know, positively or negatively, man. But I truly, you know, you hear a lot of people say God and, and everything like that, but I just want to praise the name of Jesus, whether people take that positively or negatively, 
um, because, you know, you hear people say God a lot. And I just want to give people in this world um, outside of football, you know, even, even football players and outside of sports, just in life, um, the little kid or the mother, the father that's going through life, that feel like there is no hope. Um, I want to give them the thing that I, the only hope that I believe that there is, and that's Jesus Christ. And um, I, I just believe that he's using my story to, to glorify his name. That's the only reason that I'm still playing just because I'm believing for him to do something, something great, you know, and uh, like you said, inspiring so that I can get on or TV or even just tell somebody that I meet, um, like if you put your faith in Jesus and what he did for you and not your own strength and not your own self, um, you may not see the, you may not see it, um, but I promise you, maybe not in this lifetime, but I promise you there's an, a reward for, for everybody that follows him that, is beyond our understanding, you know, and that's the day that I look forward to the day that I can see Jesus and um, I can just hug him, man. And I can just, you know, when I can physically see Jesus, that is, um, it's not really a touchdown, even though that is my dream, but that if I can tell you my dream, my dream is that I can physically see Jesus and just, man, just love, just tell him I love him, man, and tell him whatever I got to tell him or get on my knees and cry, whatever I got, you know, whatever's going to happen in that moment. But that's the moment I want to tell the whole world about, so. Gosh, I, I absolutely love it. And I'm I'm truly inspired today. And and I think what's what's so interesting about your story is how it took three ACLs for for God to really get your attention. And then he allowed one more as almost a, a, a test and an opportunity really for you to show other people, hey. That, that's okay. This, this injury happened. I'm still, I, I've told you about my faith. I'm still all in even despite the, the fourth time. Um, and, and I, I, I've seen God work similarly in, in other people's lives or even in my own life. Um, yeah. and in, in those kinds of situations. And now I'm excited for what's going to happen. Like you say, I'm right there with you, believing with you, uh, Thank how you. he's going to use you mo- moving forward in, in a fresh new way, yes, um, uh, moving past, moving past the injuries. Um, so, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm fired up for that and we'll be, we'll be pulling hard for you for, for sure. Um, and before we, we wrap up, I have to give a shout out. So one of my, one of my best friends, he, uh, from high school, big Ohio state fan, he sent me a text probably a month ago and said, Hey, you got to get this, this cam bab on your show. Like I saw him interviewed, you were doing like a, a post practice interview yeah. or something. And so I was like, all right, yeah, I'll look into it. So here we are. We got you today, and I know he'll be excited to to listen. So uh, so thanks to Duncan for for making this this happen today. So I'm I'm uh, very grateful that that you came on and and, and all that you you shared. And I, I had other questions, but man, you you ran I'm, with it. Yeah, man, my bad, man. I wasn't trying to take all your time. I was just trying no. to tell my story, man. No, that this is this is this time to tell people about Jesus, and that's exactly what yes. you did. So I'm I'm thankful you you did that. Um, let's see, I guess the, uh, maybe the only other thing, um, just as far as, uh, thinking about your, your fifth season at Ohio state and, and to, to think kind of, you, you mentioned a little bit about your, your leadership, um, thinking about from day one to day five and, and the word resilience and, and resiliency, as I was reading about you, it was kind of bubbled up and that's what you represent as a leader in, in this locker room. What does that word mean to you? What, and, and maybe we'll kind of end as an encouragement to those uh, listening today. Um, yeah, I would say resiliency is just being able to overcome whatever life throws at you, not in a sense of just being strong, but just being able to not necessarily just being able to get through it, but being able to come look different when you come out the other side of certain things, you know, and um I would just say that is the epitome of my life is going through everything I've gone through. And each time something happens, each time suffering happens, uh, Jesus does something different in my life and and he changes me in a, in a greater way than I could ever ask, you know. And sometimes I think as people, you know, it takes those those rough times to truly um, get the most out of us, you know. So I would say, uh, yeah, resiliency is being able to to overcome the obstacles in life, but look, look better um, coming out the other side, not in just, not in ways that you can maybe see physically, but just um, in my case, man, with, with, with Jesus, man, the one that, uh, the one that's done it all. So, so yeah, that's what I would say in terms of resiliency. Resiliency. I love it. Amen. Well, Cam, 
thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, love, love your heart, and and just keep shining the the light of Jesus, and allowing Him to to shine through you. And uh, can't wait to to pull for you this season, and and look forward to the next time we have you on the show. And and we'll uh, we'll keep we'll keep uh, hearing about the journey, the, the yes, journey that, that you're on, because you're just getting started, man. Yes, just getting started. So thank I'm you. excited. Thank you, man. Well, I appreciate you, man, for having me on, man. Yes, sir. I'll be tuning in, too, and next, hopefully I can tune in and find your thing and start watching, man. So, appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is Ohio State wide receiver Cameron Babb. Wow. Incredible. What an inspiring young athlete and just somebody absolutely on fire for the Lord. And I am, I'm, my faith has, has been uh, challenged and strengthened by listening to him and just hearing the passion and, and just his heart for the Lord. And, and the, the one kind of word that comes to mind is, is boldness. And, and so for you and I, if, if we've been walking with the Lord for a while, where do we stand on our boldness? How bold are we when, when we're telling people our own story? Because here's Cam, new in his faith, and he is bold, sharing the good news of Jesus and sharing how his life has been changed because of Jesus and placing his faith and trust in him. And, and so he just, he wants to share it. He, he's not, you know, beating around the bush or anything like that. He's, he's all in telling people about Jesus. So what about you and I? How bold are we? with our faith. And what's great about Cam is it, it comes from a place of humility, authenticity, and you know who he was, who he is now, and the fact that he went through, you know, just think about being a college athlete. You're, you're coming into Ohio State. You're you know, th living the dream, becoming a college football player. You're, you're one of the top wide receivers in the country heading in as a freshman, and you end up tearing your ACL four times. Yet through that, you, you, you're able to uh, experience a very real God. And, and God used all of that to, to draw Cam to, to himself. And, and so it's just, it's so inspiring. And, and so to now, you know, be able to root for him this upcoming season to see how God works in his life uh, at, at, this at this kind of this next season, uh, season of life, but also the football season, uh, I'm really intrigued by. And, and I can just sense in in who you know cam is and, and and the boldness the confidence and how god is going to speak through him uh, in a significant way and and so if you're listening today and you've been wrestling with your own faith and and wondering wait is god real you know, what does it mean to really follow jesus and and you've been you know just caught up in in your own self your own selfish desires you know kind of going your own way and you realize, yeah, that way's pretty empty, uh, very empty ultimately. Uh, but depending on where you're at in that in that journey, are you at the point where you're ready to say, "Man, I'm I'm done. I'm done going my own way. I'm ready to surrender to Jesus because I want what Cam Bab has." And and hopefully, uh, you you see it shine through me as well. I love Jesus. He's changed my heart and changed my life. And, and so if you haven't experienced the love and grace of Jesus, man, today's the day. Today's the day. It's, it, it's an opportunity to, 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 tell, to tell God, I, I'm a sinner in need of grace. Please save me. I want to spend eternity with you. I want to know Jesus in a real way. I trust and believe that you sent Jesus, your only son, to, to come to earth, to die for me. He was dead and buried, and he rose again. And he still lives, and, and now we have the ability to know him, follow him, and, and have the strength and power uh, that raised Jesus from the grave now lives in us. And so we can have joy and peace because of him. And, and we can know that, that our, our soul can be at, at rest and peace for, for eternity because of Jesus. And no matter what we've done, no matter who we've been, when Jesus enters in and we say, yeah, I believe in you, and I need you to change me. I need you to change my life. He'll do it, and and he'll reveal himself uh, in a in a real and 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 powerful way in 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 each of our lives. And so it's fun to hear Cam's story today uh, of how God has has worked dramatically uh, in his life. And and so if you want to have a conversation about this, and, and you're wondering after listening to this, 
uh, interview today. Uh, please reach out, Bryce, at unpackingit.com. Now, now's the day. Today's the day. And, and so it's cool to hear Cam talking about an Uber driver that, that ultimately you know, pointed him to Jesus. And so today you came across this interview with Cam Babb, wide receiver at Ohio State. And, and, I, and I hope that God is, is stirring in your heart and, and, and that, that this is an opportunity for you uh, to change the whole trajectory of your life um, by, by getting on your knees and, and crying out to the Lord and, and asking him to, to come in to come into your life, into your heart. And, and so uh, it's, it's just, it comes to, uh, be a, to, to be in a place of humility to say, all right, I can't do this on my own. I can't say myself. I can't do enough good things. I've already done enough bad things, and I need your grace and forgiveness. And, and, and God is, is so loving and so filled with grace uh, that he welcomes us in. And, and so uh, he welcomes us into his family, into eternity with him. That eternity starts now. We get to know Jesus now and forever. The God of the universe who created us wants to know us personally and intimately. And, and so uh, I'm so thankful uh, to God that he changed Cam's life and that Cam was willing to come on and share that with us today. And I trust and hope that, that a lot of people are, are impacted by this, this testimony today because, man, it's powerful, really, really powerful. So thank you so much for listening. Reach out to me, Bryce, at unpackingit.com. We'd love to hear from you. And thank you to uh, all the people that make this show possible. Thanks to MetaShare, all of our, our monthly donors. Greatly appreciate you, all of our supporters. Uh, we're, we're so thankful. So I'm Bryce. I'm a sports fan who follows Jesus. I believe in the good news that he died on the cross for my sin. He was resurrected. And through faith, I've been saved by his grace. I hope that is true for you as well. And I hope you'll join me as we live life as sports fans who follow Jesus together. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you next time right here on the Unpacking It podcast presented by MetaShare.